And I remember one of the last things I said to him was, um, you don't deserve any woman. Okay, let's see. Let me sit down. Let me properly, hi, <laughs> let me properly sit down. So I thought I would do um, a very different type of video today. It's something that I've toyed with talking about on my channel, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to say it because um, the majority of people who watch my, watch me are women. And this is like a woman to woman talking to you. So if you're seeing this, and this you can relate to the topic of this video then I'm glad that you're seeing it because I know for me it was something that I wished I knew about or I wish I had seen this video let's put it this way before I got into the relationship that I'm going to talk to you about so I just want this to be a video that will help that's it at the end of the day so if it helps at least one person then great I, I did that at least so I was I was in a abusive relationship. This was approximately, I mean, it was before Michael came along. <laughs> so it was actually the relationship before Michael. And I've been with Michael forever. Well, not forever, but for a very long time. Um, and it was with a guy who I met in St. Lucia. He was St. Lucian. Um, and actually, was I? I think I was um that's when i was doing my sandwich degree oh my gosh I, it's all coming back i was doing my sandwich degree at south bank university and when you do a sandwich degree you can take a year out to work and i chose to work in st lucia and i worked in an advertising agency there my parents are from there originally i have family there cousins etc and so i thought i'll work in this ad agency that's over there and just you know be over there for my one year working experience so i met him um hold on my phone is bubbly is making noises um sorry so i met this guy and everything was fine in the beginning which isn't it always so i met this guy right and he is he's born and raised in st lucia and don't forget i'm born and raised in england so two 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 different cultures in the beginning, like I said, everything was fine. Oh God, my hair's caught in my necklace. I'll just sit and fix it um, while I'm talking to you. And as, like I said, as it always is, right? It's always great in the beginning. Nothing's it's all hunky-dory. <laughs> and he was fine. There were warning signs and I didn't pay attention to them like I should have. The warning signs I noticed were things that were very, very slight in the beginning. Uh, for example, he was uh, he was quite possessive in that he didn't like he, In the beginning he loved the way I dressed and he would make pay me compliments all the time and all that stuff But then as time progressed and when we went out key word when we go out he um, Would slowly be like like if for example this this top I'm wearing he would probably uh, if we were just before we left to go out or something, he would say, oh, that looks a bit low, you know, like the top, like you think, and I'll think, really? I think it looks okay. You know, like he's thinking like it's too low this way. And I would think it looks okay. But in the, in the beginning, I didn't think it was anything, right? Because I feel like anyone can say that to you. Oh, that top looks a bit low, Karen. And then it would happen more frequently, like we, when we were going somewhere, or he would say like, oh, why are you wearing that? You don't have to, why are you wearing that? You're you're showing too much of your legs doesn't it look a bit too isn't that skirt a bit too short you know and i would change i put something else on right but i call those the whispers before you actually get something really loud that makes you realize this is not right so that was one thing also he he couldn't stand when i t spoke to another guy and it would be the most innocent thing ever I mean, we all talk to people. I talk to people all the time, every day, as you guys do. But when I spoke to a guy, oh my Lord, God forbid, it was something. He, would, he was convinced that I was flirting with, and it doesn't matter who the guy is. It could be us in a, a, a going, me going to the bar and ordering a drink and talking to the bartender. When, he, when I go back, uh, he would be like, what was that going? What was that? 
what was that about? And I'd be, what, what was what about? You know what I mean? It just went over my head because I don't know what he's talking about. But he honestly thought I was just flirting with guys. It didn't matter who it was. And it went on and on. And it got to the point where I remember if we were in a car and he would be, you know, well, I was sitting in the driver and passenger side, passenger seats, and uh, we're just sitting next to each other. And you just, you know, we're just looking at the window while, you know, just, just look out the window. He would suddenly say to me, I saw that. And I'd say, you saw what? And he would say, I saw you looking at that guy outside. Honest to goodness, I have no, honest to God, I have no idea what he was talking about. And I would say to him, what guy? What are you talking about? And he would do this. It, it started off again, very, very small. In listening to myself now, I realized that, you know, you know, you, you got to run for the hills when, you, when you're with a guy like that. But I was very, very naive and I was very, very, um, I was besotted with him. You know, I really was. And I think, and my self-esteem as well. Now, everything in, in hindsight, you see it clear. My self-esteem was obviously so low that I didn't even see the value of myself because I cared so much about him and what he thought of me and to the point where I was trying so hard to please him and I've never done that before and I was doing that with him so yeah guys if we're going in the car he would always question me saying oh you I saw you looking at that, that guy he would even burst out laughing and say and I'd be like what's funny and he goes I <laughs> carry he goes he would say Carrie, I can't believe you think you're being that slick. I saw you looking at that guy. It was just ridiculous. And I honestly, the guy has issues, to say the least. So that was that. Was that. And then also the way I was dressed um, was another thing. And then um, I remember there was a guy at the ad agency that I worked at and he was really cool. We got on as friends. So obviously with this guy who I was going out with, dating, it's not possible to have a friend who is a guy so that's a warning sign as well as the others i just told you about but anyway so this guy at work was hilarious we used to get up we'd get on and there and there was a day where we were out together and he was doing production and i was working front of the camera and uh st lucia's a very small island and by the end of the day because we spent the day together doing some kind of shooting um my boyfriend learned through friends who saw me with that you know my colleague my co-worker in the car all day on the island they told my boyfriend hey we saw your girlfriend with a guy in the car and that's how small the island is like and people are i mean i'm not saying that lucia is all like this but in my experience there was a lot of like looking at me and like he had friends who were i think who were just similar to he to how he thought because they they would cheat on their girlfriends, cheat on their wives, um, and but they God forbid their wives or their girlfriends ever even looked at a guy, you know, that would be it. They you'd be like hit. That's the kind of culture um, that I was in with this particular guy and his group of friends, um, and this happens a lot in the West Indies. At least I, I've at least from the piece the, the women who I've spoken to. I'm not going to paint them all with a uh, one brush because that's not true, but I've heard this from other women. So yeah, so I came home at the end of the day, and he confronted me, saying, "Oh, so and so saw you in the car with. So were you driving? What were you doing today?" Like that's how we would start it, and I would tell him what I did, and he goes, "Oh, so you with you were with that guy, whatever his name was, Thomas. You were with Thomas," and I said, "Yeah, we were working." I told him what we were doing, and he lost it he absolutely lost it and he pushed me onto the bed and he put his hands around my throat and he said are you cheating on me and i said no and he squeezed he was squeezing on my neck and saying over and over he said you better tell me you better tell me if you are and i was like what the? I, I, I was it was so surreal that this was happening to me like this girl from london growing up never been experienced to anything like this in her life goes to a tiny little island in St Lucia and meets this idiot who's who's doing this around my neck I was like what the so I was literally on the bed and he's like this like over me like this pressing my head into into the mattress and he kept saying over and over repeating 
just tell me the truth, Karen. Tell me the truth. Tell me. Are you cheating on me? Are you cheating with me? I know you are. Just tell me the truth. And sorry, I just thought someone could see something in the viewfinder. And I just kept saying to him, because it was a truth, I am not. I don't know what you're talking And eventually, after about five minutes, and five minutes being held like that is a fucking long time, he released his hands and he stood up and he just stood there. And, you know, I was like this, like just feeling my neck. And I said, I am not. And we just went quiet. Um, and he let that go, but there were, there were times when he would do it again. And it was always about that guy. Cause he could not, he couldn't, he couldn't stand the fact that there was a guy at the office and there were lots of guys there and I got on with all of them, but he felt like I was having a relationship with this particular person at the agency and he just could not get it out of his, but yeah, I just, I want you to know that I, I got to the point where I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't function. Whenever we went out together, it used to in the beginning be fun and we'd laugh and we'd have a great time, but then it slowly got to the point where I felt very, I was very quiet when we would go out together. Uh, I hardly laughed. I was very, I was, I would kind of just look almost like tunnel vision. Like I didn't even want to like look left or right because I was so petrified that he would say that I was looking at some guy. And it's, it, he, he literally changed the way I felt about myself and my behavior. And I, I, I bent to him. I've never done that before and I'll never do that again. But <clears throat> I wanted to make this video because I know that there are people out there who know I know there are people out there who who are going through what I went through. There has to be, statistically speaking, unfortunately, there has to be. And this video is for you. And it's to say that they are warning signs. They come as whispers. I heard, I think it was Oprah who said that. They come as whispers, but then they get louder. The voice gets louder until you can't even deny it, what it is. A cousin, relative once said to me, um, love doesn't hurt it's easy it feels easy um, and it doesn't hurt it shouldn't hurt ever and um, because that's not what it is if that's what you are going through so it got to the point where he didn't want us to go out together anymore socially so in the beginning we would go out everywhere together and it would be fun laughing ha ha and then as time progressed there was a whole like you know, why are you wearing that? That's too revealing. And, oh, that looks a bit too low and that looks a bit too tight. And can't you haven't got something a bit looser to, you know, you're looking at this guy, you're looking at that guy, um, always think, even his own friends who say, I'd see, I saw you um, flirting with so-and-so who was one of his own friends who I was talking to, you know, um, these, these type of things I've heard from other women in abusive relationships. So there's a common thread or a trait or set of characteristics that I feel like these guys have and because of that I'm not saying this is like black and white because you know it's obviously the gray area I'm just generalizing here but if you have recognized or are recognizing any of these whispers which just get louder and louder I'm telling you that they are there for a reason and you can't fool yourself because deep down I knew this was wrong. This is not this was this was not right. This is not how happy relationships are supposed to be. But because I felt the way I did about him, I felt that I could I could do this. Realize that it is not normal. This is not a normal guy. This is not a normal relationship, and it is a wrong relationship. And you should never, ever bend and change who you are for some guy. 
never ever you are a queen you are the exact opposite in fact they bend to you so again this is all hindsight and i you know you always come out you should come out wiser because after that relationship ended i came out so much stronger and better and know that i would never be in a relationship like that again and i remember one of the last things i said to him was um you don't deserve any woman and for some reason that really hurt him and i don't know why because i could see in his face when i said that and he says don't say that like he was really hurt because i was thinking at first of saying you don't deserve me but then i thought no correct you don't deserve any woman you know and i just said it to him at a moment of realization and that was he, he just is we would think that i kind of like <laughs> you know i i he felt it when i said that and i'm glad he did because i i truly believe it and i don't think you can ever think you can change these people because that was the one thing that i thought and i know that's the one thing a lot of women think and also he would cry and profusely apologize whenever he um was in any way physical um you know he would he would just oh my i literally saw tears come out of his eyes he would cry i mean if there was an oscar ceremony he would win he would win across the board best actor best supporting actor best whatever you would if you saw him now and he cried you would you would believe it not knowing anything you would believe him um and i thought man you are a really good liar in in this is looking back on a relationship now um but at the time I fell for it and it became a cycle where he would say really abusive because he was abusive um, verbally as well because someone can be verbally as well as physically abusive but so when whenever he was he would he would come around and just be so apologetic and like I said sometimes it'd be like the waterworks as well and I and I would fall for it and I would and he would say while he was crying he would say all the things I've always wanted him to, to say to me that he wouldn't normally but they would come out then when he's sorry so and that's what keeps kept me in with him that's what hooked me back in whenever he probably may have suspected I was on my way out it would hook me back when he would do these incredible prof profusely apologizing and crying um, but then it got to the point where it was like not even that was working because you just realize that are you happy because you should be happy when you're in a relationship you shouldn't pretend to others that you're happy you should just be happy it just that's how it is I'm just saying to anyone out there who has been through anything like this or is going through anything like this if you're recognizing anything that I've said in this video just know that there is help out there and I'm going to leave at the end of this video any um, numbers or anything that I have that can um, you can use you can um, contact I didn't speak to anybody I just got through it myself I didn't share with anyone I didn't confide with anyone my mum suspected though because she could see her daughter was unhappy she couldn't stand him um, I think she could just you know her mums just know they didn't just sense it. I guess I couldn't hide I couldn't hide it enough from her and I remember there was a day she she told me I had a dream about you Karen this is when I was with him she said I dreamt that you were really sad and you were standing in the rain because it was pouring because we believe a lot in dreams and what they mean um, and she goes it was pouring really hard and you were just standing there in the rain and she was looking at me as if she was waiting for me to break and say something to her and I didn't um, but after we like she went her way and I went my way I think I broke down and cried because she literally read me right then um, she did and it came through she she was thinking of it already and suspecting it and yeah anyway that is kind of it um, at the time you know like I said including my mom they didn't really know if anything was like that level was happening I think if anything they just thought God, he's so possessive like you know like in terms of like how she's dressing I think that was the most they ever thought but they didn't know anything about anything kind of like the physical abuse or the the, the, the verbal abuse that was coming out of him because he that was never shown 
and I never said anything. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video for you to, I know it's very different. I don't do these kind of videos on my channel. And if you're the first time seeing this, seeing me, um, I don't do videos like this. If you check my, <laughs> look at my YouTube channel, it's nothing like this at all. But I thought I should do it. I felt I should. And so I acted on it and I did it. And I want it, like I said, to help anyone, at least one person out there who's going through this, because I know statistically there may be someone who is watching this, at least one person, and can can maybe relate to some of the, the signs that I said that are out there, because they are. So that is it. Um, and I just want to tell you, as someone who's been there, they don't change. Don't think, don't try and keep convincing yourself that he will change. Don't believe him when he says he will change, when he cries and he looks at you and begs you and says how much he loves you and tells you he can't believe what he's done and he's, he's, he feels terrible and awful. It's crocodile tears. Actions speak louder than words. He's going to keep repeating himself. Don't believe it. All right? Don't believe it. That is it. I'm gone. That is it. <laughs> Um, yeah, back to the usual schedule programming of videos of fashion and all that kind of stuff because that is what I actually do videos on. But because I know there's a lot of women who watch this, I thought, you know what, go on, do it, Karen, do, do, do the video, um, get it out there, and uh, hopefully it will, it will help somebody. All right, anyway, take care, my loves. Bye. Oh, god, my leg, my leg's gone to sleep. <laughs>